Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 550. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast, the podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because we are going to be talking about something that I know personally makes a huge difference in your ability to be productive and productive every day and productive in every facet of your life. Now, yes, we know that you want to build your cash flow. We know that you want to become a bigger, better, better person, better investor, better husband, father, spouse, etc. You have goals and that's great. However, if you can't focus, if you can't keep your attention, if you can't stay on target, well, it's going to be a long, hard road. I have with me today none other than Nir Eyal, and he has a book called Indistractable, which I am already intrigued by the title. I'm also intrigued because if you know him, you know his prior book, Hooked, and both books have a yellow cover. I'm like, is he trying to corner the market on the yellow cover? I don't really know. We can ask him those questions and many, many more. But here's the point. How many of us find ourselves hitting that repeat button? Or you ever been in that situation where you're reading and you have to reread the three paragraphs over and over and over again because you're like, what happened? I missed it. Now being able to have control over something like your focus, your attention is going to be, a, it's like a secret weapon. That's, that's how I'm going to say it. And that's why I think he wrote the book. So I know you, you're probably walking the dog, changing some diapers, listening to your kids scream in the background. But right now, I'm going to ask you to become a little bit more indistractable as we listen, learn, and love from Nier Eyal. Nier, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jay. That was a beautiful introduction. You really nailed it. Thank you. Uh, well, you, you're making it easy because this topic is something that's near and dear to my heart, and we will definitely get into that. However, before we get too far, what I got to do, this is your first time here. I have to ask you the same question I tend to ask everybody else. You ready? I'm ready. All right. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, like Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, etc., because I tend to think of them as the same. For example, as a entrepreneur, occasionally I can envision myself flying around town, using our products and services and saving customers one sale at a time. Also, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. For example, Spider-Man. There was a time he was just a kid going to school, doing his thing, taking some photos, hoping to have enough money to take Mary Jane on a date. Then one day he gets bit by a spider, discovers, man, I I have superhuman abilities. And now he has to choose whether to use it for good or for evil. So my question to you is as follows. Before Hooked, before Indistractable, before being featured in places like Fast Company, Forbes, Entrepreneur, etc., before everything that we know you for today what we want to know is who is near a all who is near a all uh near a all is still uh a chubby immigrant who grew up in uh, orlando florida i was born in israel i moved when i was three years old and uh i had a weight problem for for a good chunk of my life Mm. and uh, that's actually where i started this journey on um really diving into how various products and services make us do things we sometimes regret, like eating too much or eating for the wrong reasons. 
And so at, at my core, I think that's a big part of who I am. I got stuck with this very unusual name for Orlando, Florida. <laughs> I didn't know anybody else who had uh, no. this, this strange of a name. And uh, I, you know, I used to – now it's the name of my blog. My blog is nearandfar.com, but near and far was what people said, like kids in the schoolyard said to you know, make fun of me. <laughs> right, right. When they, you know, kids pick on each other for all kinds of reasons, so I got to turn it around for my advantage. But then also, you know, when I think of deep down inside, that's probably still who I am is that kind of chubby, insecure kid who wasn't really sure how to get control of uh, of what I used to eat too much of or the reasons why I used to eat too much. Uh, and I think that's kind of that that was the, the genesis of my um, career into understanding how things change our behavior, how they can persuade and sometimes coerce us into doing things we want to do and sometimes don't want to do. You know, what's really interesting is to hear you say that and then to look at the titles of both your books, Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products, and mm -hmm. then now Indistractable, how, how to... Control your control. attention. You yeah, 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 yeah. Control it. And so between those two things, what's going through my head is you're, you're, it's like you're still telling the story. Does that yeah. make sense? Absolutely. So uh, there's that... There's that uh phrase that we authors like to repeat that research is me search and huh. that's that's really why i like to write uh books <laughs> because you know I, i'm not one of these people who uh writes what they know i write what i am what i want to know and it's my journey that i'm sharing with with readers and frankly i, I wrote both books for me uh, I looked for answers that I couldn't find. I mean, when I when I look for answers, first thing I do is read every other book on the topic. And nine times out of ten, somebody's written an excellent book on the topic, and we don't need another one. Uh, but once in a while, every five years or so, I come across a question that nobody has answered to my satisfaction, and that's exactly what happened with Hooked. I could not find a book on how to use technology to build healthy habits in users' lives. That book was more targeted towards business people, entrepreneurs, uh, software developers, people who make apps and websites that they want to improve people's lives using healthy habits. And then with Indistractable, same story. I, I had a problem. I was getting distracted in my day-to-day -day life, and I, I uh, didn't know what to do about it. And so I read every book on the topic, and they all basically told me the same bad advice that I tried. It didn't work. <laughs> and uh, I decided to go deeper into the psychology of distraction to really understand, wait a minute, why, why don't we do the things that we know we should do? Why, why? That's such a strange thing, right? We know what to do. I don't think <laughs> most people have a knowledge cap, right? I, I certainly knew that to, be, uh, to have an aesthetically pleasing body, I had to uh, eat right and exercise, right? D does anybody not know that? Everybody knows that. <laughs> We all know that chocolate cake is worse for us, worse for our waistline than than uh, a healthy salad, but we, we do it anyway. Or uh, we know we should exercise, but we don't. We know if we want a healthy relationship with our loved ones, we have to be fully present with them. But why do we check our phones at the dinner table or when we go out to fr with friends for dinner? Why is everybody on their devices? Or with work, frankly. you know, I We all know that if you want to be great at your job, you have to do the work, especially the hard stuff that other people don't want to do. Uh, why don't we do it, right? Why do we check right. email all day and call meetings that are unnecessary and you know, hang out on group chat channels and, and partake in office gossip? We all know we shouldn't, but we do it anyway. Why don't we do what we know we should do? That's the real question behind Indistractable. So, so I guess, has anyone ever asked you, like, you know, we've heard it said, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Like, do you eat an apple a day? <laughs> no, actually, apples have, in my estimation, too much sugar. <laughs> of course, of it's course, it's not they worth do. it. <laughs> there it is. There, it is that, but here's what I here's what I'm liking right now, because what you're fundamentally saying is that it's not an issue of knowledge. There isn't right. a lack of knowledge. There's a lack of many other things possibly, but there, there's not a lack of it. And what what's also interesting about, you know, some of the target markets that you were mentioning is that those who are making technology and apps, their number one thing they're trying to do is to keep us either on that app, engaged in that app and 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 focused on, you know, whatever's going on inside that app as opposed to what we're actually supposed to be doing. And now has anyone asked you like are is this like the opposite of hooked? Is that is that this is like, you know, here's how you get them and then here's how you can free yourself away as yeah. well. <laughs> 
Well, so it, 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 you know, that's part of the reason why I wanted the, the covers to be similar. I wanted them to rhyme but not I be see. the same uh, because there is kind of a continuation along a theme here. Uh, you know, who better to give you insight into how to put these things in their place than an industry insider, right? Do you want some professor who never uses social media to tell you <laughs> or do you want somebody who knows how these products are built and can tell, tell you the Achilles heel of exactly how to put them in their place? And I think what really differentiates my approach is a few things. One, I don't tell you to stop using these things. And the reason why I don't tell you to do that is because we've been through this script before. We know how this story ends, right? When I was obese, uh, I would go on these fad diets, mm -hmm, right? 30 mm -hmm. days of no fast food, 30 days of pickle juice and cayenne pepper, you know, like these stupid fad diets that I would whoa, do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you say pickle <laughs> juice and cayenne like, you know, pepper? I'm, is that I'm, a real I'm thing? No, oh, I don't know. It's just an exaggeration. But, you know, people, people do all, you know, apple cider vinegar for 30 days, you know, all these sure, crazy sure, diets. Sure. But then what happens on day 31? Well, you go back to normal. Right, exactly. So In fact, me, you're looking forward to going back to normal by day that's 31. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. So instead, and that's exactly what happens with these silly digital detoxes or 30-day plans is, you know, unless we figure out why we are really distracted, what's the psychology of distraction, then we just go back to our old habits again and again. And so that's really what, what this book is about, not just when it comes to technology distractions, but all distractions, and I think it's important, you know, words really matter here. So it's important to define what do I mean by this word distraction. Yes. Distraction can – the opposite of distraction is not focus. The opposite okay. of distraction is traction. So both words, traction and distraction, come from the same Latin root, trahare, which means to pull. So traction – by the way, both words end in the same five letters. They both end in A-C-T-I-O-N, right? Nice. Action. Action. So distraction and traction. So traction is any action that pulls you towards what you want. The opposite of traction is distraction, any action that pulls you away from what you want to do. And so the difference is really intent. And so I'm not one of these people who say that somehow playing Candy Crush is morally inferior to watching a football game or that you know <laughs> checking email is is better than you know a slack channel or I don't know whatever it is it's not the technology that's the problem that this is what I learned in in my 5 years of researching this book is that my gut reaction and what every other book told me what every tech critic says technology is the problem you see that's what's getting you distracted it's the technology and it's not the technology. Every generation blames the technology, right? Before the internet, it was television. Before that, it was the radio. And I mean, for God's sakes, even the written word, Plato talked about how the written word was going to enfeeble men's minds. So all of these things have created these moral panics. And the, the problem is, and here's the deep truth that I learned. The problem is that the distraction is not the technology. The problem is that the distraction is thinking it's the technology because when we create the scapegoat, it saves us from having to do the work to actually fix the problem. Wait a minute. It's not technology that's addicting my kids. Wait a minute. It's not the technology that's keeping me away from doing what I want to do. Wait a minute. That means I might have to actually do something about it. And I don't know if I like that. So let no, me let no. me instead blame something else. <laughs> what you, are you saying? You want us to take responsibility? Stop it. What? <laughs> <laughs> now, okay. So this this topic is really near and dear to me for a number of reasons. One, I I you know I do my best to be as productive as humanly possible every day because you know time matters. Being able to create value is part of it. And I, I know for myself, I, I enjoy everything technical possible. I mean, without the miracle of technology, if you will, this conversation between you and I would not be happening right now. That's right. So That's right. It, it, it's it, there's no avoiding technology, I guess, is really where I'm going. However, you're, you, you presuppose that we can control its effect on us. That's, that's, the, that's what I get. And I want to hear more about what you mean there because – to be able to have control over that would be um, freeing for many, I think. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned this um, this idea of a superpower earlier yes. on how entrepreneurs have this superpower. So this is, to me, the superpower of this century. That mm. becoming This is why I call the book Indistractable. Indistractable like indestructible. That if you are the kind of person who lives with personal integrity, if you are as honest with other people as you are to yourself, 
If you do whatever it is that you say you're going to do, it's not me that's going to tell you what your values should be. What I want to do is to empower you to live out your values no matter what your values are, Mm -hmm. but to actually live out those values. That's what's important to me. And so I'm not going to tell you that doing X or Y or Z is good or bad. What I'm going to do is to try and help you do whatever it is you think is important for your life based on your values. And so that to me is a superpower because imagine how powerful – we could become if we did everything we said we would do. When we worked out when we said we would, we would uh, work on those big projects at work when we, even though we don't feel like it, we still do them, we still get them done. I mean, you could, you could run circles around your competition if you simply executed on everything you said you're going to do. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm actually wondering, because when you say everything that can sound like a weight, I'm wondering, like, even if we just did 10% of what we said. <laughs> right, I, that's that, true. Yeah, because that, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, when we get inspired to do something like right now, someone's probably being inspired to do something that they know they should have already done. And mm-hmm. they're going to make the decision. Well, I'll get to it on Monday. I'll start it on January 1st. That that's that's the popular one right there. It's like, OK, cool. I know I want to uh, lose weight or earn more money. I'll just wait till January 1st. And it's the middle of summer. Uh, and I'm like, why not start today? Mm-hmm. My uh, here's my question, though, when it comes to this concept then of being distracted and and i guess losing traction <laughs> towards something or being pulled i think that was the the word um why do you why does it feel so good then hey guys thanks for listening as always and i'm glad that you continue to support with each and every download and subscription and share one of the things that i want to ask you though is where are you listening to me from right now I know some of you, maybe you're on a treadmill, maybe you're washing dishes, maybe you're walking that dog, and some of you are actually in a vehicle driving right now. One of the fun things that you can do, get some of your time back, is begin to living a car-free existence. But even then, it can be a little complicated. So one of the things that I want you to do is I want you to go over to Zipcar. Go to joinzipcar.com forward slash cash flow diary. It's a way that I am able to still go get a car just for a few hours very, very simply so that if I have a lot of errands to run and sheets to drop off and running to the short term rentals or if I just want to go for a long trip up to LA and back, etc. I can rent a car for a very, very short period of time. And the cool part is I don't even have to pay for any gas. Again, go to joinzipcar.com forward slash cash flow diary. Why do we do it? Right. It's it's a great question. And it's it's a pretty perplexing one if you think about it. It's pretty mysterious. Why do we, despite knowing what to do, we all know, you know, not only today, knowing what to do, but we also know that it's not good for us. We it, it, oh. but in that moment, it doesn't seem to matter. Right. It's exactly as you said, it's not about the knowledge gap. Uh, it's about the uh, this idea that it's not just about what you do; it's about what you prevent doing, right? What you make sure you don't do on the right. path to doing your task is right. making sure you don't get distracted with all the other crap that comes out uh, along the way. So the reason we we have to back up to to a more fundamental question, hmm. which is not only why do we get distracted, mm-hmm. right? Why do we do things we know we shouldn't do or don't do the things we know we should do? But let's back up even a, a, a question deeper to really start from first principles. Why do we do anything? Most people will tell you that motivation is about the pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain, carrots and sticks. This is called Freud's pleasure principle. Problem is, it ain't true. That we are not motivated by the pursuit of pleasure and avoidance of pain. That in fact, neurologically speaking, it's pain all the way down. That this is called the homeostatic response. And you can see it physiologically, right? When it comes to our, our bodies, when we feel discomfort, the body gets us to act. So, for example, if you're hot, uh, sorry, if you're cold, you put on a coat. If you go back inside and now you're hot, you take it off. If you feel hunger pangs, you eat. If you're stuffed, oh, that doesn't feel good, you stop eating. So those are physiological responses. Mm-hmm. But it turns out the same rules apply to our psychological reactions. So, for example, if you're feeling um, lonely, well, maybe you check Facebook. If you're feeling uncertain, You check Google. If you're bored, you check YouTube videos, uh, Reddit, the news, sports scores. All of these products cater to uncomfortable 
the, uh, psychological sensations. These are called internal triggers. So everything we do, even the pursuit of pleasure, think about this for a minute, even craving something, desire, wanting. There's a reason we say love hurts because wanting something neurologically is destabilizing. It makes us feel a form of discomfort. Even for something that feels good, that wanting is itself uncomfortable. So if we agree that the true nature of motivation is spurred by the desire to escape discomfort, what this means is that time management is pain management. And this is something you won't see in, in, in all these productivity books that give you lots of tactics and techniques without understanding this fundamental truth about why we do anything. You'll always get, you'll always get distracted by something. We have to come to terms with the fact that our behavior is driven by the desire to escape discomfort. And to deal with that discomfort, we only have two choices. We can either learn techniques to cope with that discomfort in a healthier manner, and I give you all kinds of techniques to do that, or we have to fundamentally change the source of that discomfort. Those are only two options, but we have to deal with those internal triggers. All of the time management productivity tips in the world won't save you from yourself if you don't understand and plan ahead to deal with these internal triggers. That's the, a key, key lesson here. Okay, so... Needless to say, a number of questions have popped into my head now. The, like, when, <laughs> when you were talking, uh, you're like, uh, when you were talking about internal triggers, what's going through my mind is how, how on earth can so many people have an internal trigger that drives them to watch cat videos on YouTube? That's yeah. like, I mean, I'm baffled by that one. Okay, now don't, <laughs> now for those of you listening, don't send me a whole bunch of hate mail about cats. I know cats are cute. They're cuddly. I, I got it. I got it. But, but, I, but cat videos, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with watching cat videos. Tell me why watching cat videos is somehow better than uh, reading a romance novel or watching a football game. If that's what you do in your spare time, go for it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's only bad if it's a distraction. If it's traction, there's nothing wrong with it. Remember, the time you plan to waste is not wasted time. If you enjoy that, if that's consistent with your values, do it. My, what I want to help people do is this, to stop this pernicious practice of watching cat videos instead of being with your kids, instead of being with your friends, instead of doing that big project you know you have to work on. That's when watching cat videos is actually a problem. And, and, and that's exactly so. And you ended up hitting on something. I, I don't know, but this is something that I know I did earlier this year for myself. Uh, I fell in love with technology long ago and I liked, you know, taking notes, especially when I'm listening to the, the awesome indiv- uh, individuals that we, I get to talk to when, when doing the show. So I'm, you know, taking notes, but I typically would do that on, a, on an iPad to be very specific. I since got rid of that, and and then I switched to, I thought, hey, maybe the Android pad would be better. But no, nope, that didn't work either because it kept receiving notifications all day long. Mm. I'm now using an e-ink tablet. It can't receive any notifications. It can't do anything of that nature. All it really can do is let me write on it, which is great <laughs> for yeah. me. Now, my question to you is, is that – kind of what you're talking about you know find, when you said some you said um change the source of the discomfort right. so l- let me paint this picture in uh in in the listener's mind here that yeah. we have a, a think about a big plus mark okay a big plus okay. mark you've got the horizontal axis you've got the vertical axis yes on the horizontal axis to the right is traction any action that pulls you towards what you want to do things you yes. do with intent yes on the left is an arrow pointing towards distraction, anything that pulls you away from what you want to do. Okay, right. so now you've got traction and distraction at the, uh, at the east and west sides yep. of this plus, and plus, tri- uh, this plus mark. Yes. Now you've got the plus mark, the, the vertical axis. You've yep. got the north and the south, okay? Mm-hmm. In the south, pointing up is an arrow towards the center of this plus mark. Okay. Those represent external triggers. External triggers are the pings, dings, rings, and things that prompt (laughs) you to either traction or distraction. 
So if you get a notification on your phone that says, hey, it's time for that meeting. Uh, hey, don't forget, uh, now you need to leave to go hang out with your friends. Uh, don't forget to work out right now. This is your time to work out. That's moving you towards traction. But if you're trying to work on that big project as you were working on and now you get a notification from Facebook or an email or a group chat notification, now it's moving you towards distraction. So there's nothing inherently evil with these technologies. It's that we have to ask ourselves when it comes to the external triggers, is the external trigger serving me or am I serving it? And so based on the answer to that question, we can excise a lot of these uh, in external triggers that don't serve us from our life. Now, there's still one more part of this, of, of this plus mark. The north represents internal triggers. So we have external triggers from the bottom. We have internal triggers from the top. Mm -hmm. And those internal triggers can also move us towards traction or distraction, to the right or to the left, traction or distraction. Now, those internal triggers are the most important thing we have to deal with. This is what we were talking about earlier with those uncomfortable emotional states that we seek to escape. Right? Mm -hmm. These internal triggers prompt us to either traction or distraction. So most distraction, by, and by far the most distraction, comes from internal triggers. Distraction starts from within us. It's the desire to escape boredom, loneliness, fatigue, uncertainty, whatever it might be. We have to learn how to deal with those first. That's the first step. Now, now that we have this picture in your head, right? you have these four points of this plus mark. Mm -hmm. At the top is master the internal triggers. That's the first step. Now we're going to go clockwise. So now we have on the east side, right? We have, uh, we have make time for traction. That's the second step. Make time for traction. This is all about putting time in our day to live out our values. This is what I call turning your values into time. If I ask most people, what's important to you? Oh, the, my, my kids, my family, my friends, my health. That's what's really important to me. Oh, is that right? Well, is that time in your schedule? Turns out two-thirds of Americans do not keep a calendar. No calendar whatsoever. Mo the majority of people who actually do keep a calendar, the remaining third, don't use it correctly. And by correctly, I mean they think they manage their time with a to-do list. And they put stuff on a to-do list because productivity books say you can get things done by just putting stuff on a to-do list. But ah. Things will get done. This is a total <laughs> myth because it only talks about half yeah. of the solution. Mm -hmm. Half the solution is, of course, listing down what you want to do with your time. The other half is, of course, putting the task in your calendar. Yeah. And so few people do this except for C-level executives. Without exception, when I was when I was doing interviewing for the for this book, and I was doing you know I did five years of research, both academic research as well as talking to people who are you know top of their game. Without exception, every single C level executive I talk to does this, and we should learn from them and exemplify it. They walk around their entire day, most of them print this out with a schedule for where they need to be and what they need to do for every minute of their day. We need to do this. Why? Because if you can't tell me what you got distracted from, you have no right to moan about this. Mm. You can't get distracted when you don't know what you got distracted from. <laughs> okay? So if you put something in your schedule that says work on big project for 45 minutes, great. Now you know what it is you got distracted from. I checked Google. I went on email. Whatever it might be. You now know the difference between traction and distraction. Traction is anything you do with intent, anything you planned ahead for. Distraction is anything else. So we have to make time for traction. The third step is what you identified is all about hacking back external triggers. So of course, you know, not only hacking back, and I call it hacking back because, you know, as you mentioned, the, the game makers, the app makers, the social media companies, the news media, all of these people are attention merchants. They sell mm -hmm, your mm -hmm. attention to the highest bidder, and they hack these programs to get you to do what they want you to do, to spend time with them. But you don't have to let that happen. We can hack back. So of course we can hack back our phones, we can hack back our computers, and I show you exactly how to do that. It'll take you an hour max to do all this, and you'll save – countless hours in return. It's a great return on investment for your time. But we also need to be conscious of all of the external triggers that are not tech-based. How much of a diversion, how much of a distraction are all these stupid meetings 
that clog up our day. <laughs> that we do, and why do people call these stupid meetings? It goes back to these internal triggers. People call these stupid meetings that are totally unnecessary because it feels better than doing the goddamn work. <laughs> you know it's true. Ooh, I, I, hey, I I'm on your side myself, right now, man. Right? I want to hear. I just want to hear myself think for a few hours, and I want six people to come hear me talk. Okay, I'm going to tell you how to make that stop at your company. Right? It's about. It's, it goes back to these internal triggers. I'm going to show you how to make sure that you can hack back all sorts of internal triggers. One of the most common distractions that people told me they experienced throughout their day. It wasn't their cell phone. It wasn't a ping or ding on their computer. It was a colleague. Mm. It was someone stopping by their desk. You know, mm-hmm. many people today work in an open floor plan office, mm-hmm. and someone just stops by and says, "Hey, you want to chat for a bit, or you'll never believe what just happened to Becky, or blah blah blah." You know, some kind of office co- gossip they want to talk about, and this is a huge source of distraction. The worst part is we don't even realize how much our work product is suffering from all of this distraction. Because in the moment, it feels fine. Okay, fine. I'll just take a quick break and talk to Becky for a little bit, right? But we don't realize how much how much better our work product could be if we could just focus and do that task that we said we would do. Not all day. I want you to take time to you know build a relationship with Becky if she's important to you and that's consistent with your values. Do it. But one of the most pernicious forms is this open floor, floor plan office that perpetuates so much distraction. So in every single copy, print copy of Indistractable, is a piece of cardstock, bright red cardstock, that you pull out of the book, you fold it into thirds, and you put it on your computer monitor. This is called a screen sign. And it's a sign to tell your colleagues that right now I'm indistractable. Please come back later. And it says that in print on the sign. Okay. So now you've hacked back that external trigger of people interrupting you while you're doing your focused work time. And then finally, the last step. So now we're, we we did we did north, south, east. We did. I'm uh, yes. oh, sorry, north, yes. east, and south. The master mm-hmm. internal triggers. Yep. Make time for traction and hack back external triggers. The last part, the fourth step, is to prevent distraction with pacts. And this has to be done last because if you do this prematurely, it can actually backfire. Mm-hmm. So preventing distraction with pacts is all about taking steps in advance to make sure we don't do something we don't want to do. And there are price packs, effort packs, and identity packs. There are three ways that we can plan ahead to make sure we don't get distracted by something that that can pull us astray. And so there's lots of techniques you can use to do that as well. You know, as as you were talking, one of the thoughts that came to my head is, especially when you were talking about the coworker one, it's Mm -hmm. kind of two things of the, it's two sides of the same coin. When, have you quantified like what, distraction costs, you know, in terms of dollars, uh, like per number of employees or something? You know, I haven't quantified it, but it is huge. <laughs> I can, yeah, I can. I'm just like, this number has got to be yeah. massive. Yeah, we don't have to quantify it in order to know that it's a, it's a problem. Uh, and, and by the way, just a quick note, I'm not against diversions. Right, so some people, when I tell them about this this philosophy of becoming indistractable, they say, "Oh, but you know, distraction is is a good thing. It helps me become creative. It helps me take in different people's insights." No, no, no. That's a diversion. A diversion of attention is perfectly wonderful. If you want to, you know, read some website that has nothing to do with your work because it's fun uh, and it and it's educational. If you want to hang out with a colleague, great. If you want to meditate, pray, great. Whatever it is you want to do, those are diversions of attention, but they are not distractions. Distraction is anything that pulls you away from what you yourself planned to do. One of the the the, you know, the myths around distraction. This is amazing because distraction tricks us in the moment, right? People, this used to happen to me all the time before I figured out this methodology. I would sit down at my desk, and top of my to do list was finish the presentation, right? <laughs> like I had to do a slide presentation, or I had to do some writing, hard work, right? right that required right. focus. And I'd sit down, and then I'd say, you know. Let me just check email for a quick minute here because that, that's productive, right? Email, that's kind of a worky thing to do, right? <laughs> but guess what? If that's not what you plan to do with your time, it is just as much of a distraction as playing video games because that's not what you plan to do with your time. And so the, the real idea here is how do you do what it is you say you're going to do by planning ahead? I mean the, if there's one mantra I want people to remember to, to you know get tattooed on their arms <laughs> is that the antidote for impulsiveness is forethought. 
that if you are making plans for how you're going to get in shape when the the fork with a chocolate piece of chocolate cake is on its way to your mouth, it's mm. too late. You've lost, right? Mm. If you are saying that that social media and email is distracting, but you sleep with your cell phone next to you on your nightstand, you've lost. They're going to get you, okay? These companies understand what makes you click and what makes you tick better than you understand yourself. So we have got to plan ahead. We have got to take these simple four simple steps to make sure that we can get the best of these tools without letting them get the best of us. So I guess as, you know, an aside, it would working are people who like do telecommuting or working at home or what have you, are they less distracted? Cause you know, that coworker isn't there. Yeah. Well, so I work from home. So my, I'm one of these, this category of people and there are different potential distractions <laughs> because in, you know, at least at the office, you know, it, you can see other people working, right? And so there's kind of this social proof of, okay, everybody's busy. I'll be busy too. When you're at home, nobody knows if you're, you know, scrolling through Reddit and watching YouTube videos. Nobody knows if you're reading a book. Uh, nobody knows if your kid uh, comes into your, you know, to, while you're working and interrupts you while you're while you're busy doing something. And so all those things can be distractions as well. And so in many cases, I actually find that people who I've worked with uh, who are uh, p- people who work from home have in some ways a, a – I don't know if I would say more difficult time, but certainly a different set of challenges when it comes to distraction. Yeah, no, I, I, w- I would agree with that. <laughs> I was wondering – I was kind of wondering what you were going to say but because at the same time, um, sometimes I, I feel like I, I'm more focused when I actually go – like I'll go to Starbucks intentionally. Sure. Uh, yeah. For and I feel like I get more done there than if I stayed at home. Now, the is there a point at which distraction becomes just procrastination? So procrastination is when we intentionally put something off. Uh, procrastination is what we do uh, as one form of distraction. It's a subset of mm. distraction. Distraction is defined as any task that pulls you away from what you really do or we really want to do. And so when you get and when you procrastinate, that can be a form of distraction. But I wouldn't say that all procrastinate or all distraction is procrastination. I would say that all procrastination is distraction. For example, okay, well, what is a form of, of distraction that's not procrastination? Um, what if you are, um, you know, you 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 planned to uh, be with your kid and uh, you get bored for a second and you check Facebook. Okay, that's not procrastination. You're not putting anything off. You're just not being fully present and doing the thing you said you wanted to do. Got it. Totally understood. This is quite interesting, and I can see it having a profound effect for a number of entrepreneurs, a number of moms, dads, brothers, sisters, everyone in in so many different ways. In fact, uh, I'm going to take a stab and say that, you know, the people who have listened this far, they want to find out more. What's going to be the best way for them to catch up with you and or, you know, Find out more about the book, grab a copy, et cetera. Absolutely, yeah. So the book is called Indistractable. It's spelled I-N, the word distract, A-B-L-E, so indistractable. And if you go to indistractable.com, there are all kinds of free resources and tools there. Whether you buy the book or not, you can get an 80-page workbook uh, free on how to become indistractable. And uh, the book is available wherever books are sold. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's there's all kinds of tools there at indistractable.com that uh, as soon as you uh, get the book and, and, and enter your order number, you'll get a video course, you'll get a distraction tracker, all of these tools, a schedule builder, all of these tools that I couldn't put in the book because uh, I needed something interactive. So you'll get all these tools uh, online, like the schedule builder is a, a way for you actually to create a schedule template. And that's completely free. You don't even have to sign up for anything for that one. Uh, and all that's available at indistractable.com. Love it. Love it. Now, as we wind down, I have a final question for you because I'm curious to hear your answer. Um, Mm -hmm. Let's just pretend for a moment that, you know, there's someone who's been listening this far and they get to what I like to call the precipice of decision. It's that point where something you've been putting off or thinking you should have done a long time ago, you're finally like, you know what, that's it. I'm drawing the line in the sand. And based upon something you said or we said together, they're finally there. They're like, okay, that's it. I'm doing it. Nir says I can do it. I believe him. I'm moving forward. Now, (laughs) Nir, you know, like I know, when we make these types of decisions, often it comes with a companion and that companion comes in the form of a voice. And it's a voice that reminds us, 
how it didn't work last time, why it probably won't work this time. And you, you're going to be productive now? Don't you know who you are? And for some people, they're related to that voice. <laughs> so my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that they're actually going to follow through. They're going to do exactly what you suggest, and they're going to do so in the next 24 to 48 hours. What would you suggest that they do? I would suggest that we reimagine our temperament, that one of the pitfalls that so many of us fall into is this belief that we are what we are, that we have you know, you see, I have a short attention span. I have an addictive personality. I'm somehow deficient. Uh, you see, as you, as you said, you see what happened last time? This is just evidence of what I'm incapable of. And that is a story. It's just a myth. And it's a story that, thankfully, we can retell ourselves. So psychologists have found that one of the best techniques we can use is self-compassion. That people who use uh, uh, self-compassion, who have a high degree of self-compassion, are much more likely to accomplish their long-term goals. So you say, okay, well, how do I cultivate self-compassion? It's actually quite easy. We talk to ourselves the way we would talk to a friend. Hmm. If our friends, if we talk to our friends the way we talk to ourselves, we wouldn't have any friends. Right? <laughs> we beat ourselves up and tell ourselves how we're deficient and how we're stupid and how we won't get things done. And you see it's more evidence of this is who you are. And it turns out that it, that is really unhelpful. And instead, we need to talk to ourselves with compassion, with curiosity, not with contempt. And the, 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 the message I want you to tell yourself is that you are far more powerful than you think you are. That we can get distraction in its place. We can all become indistractable. I love it. I definitely appreciate your journey and sharing your journey of self-discovery in various different ways with the world. That takes a certain level of courage and bravery. Uh, writing a book in and of itself, it's its own journey. And you've done it multiple times now. And from that, you're affecting so, so many. I just want to be one of the first to say, just thanks for taking the time to share your knowledge, your wisdom, and your insight here with us today at the Cashflow Diary, sir. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Jay. It's been really fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? That means go grab a copy of Indistractable Win Now before you get, well, distracted. Because you know, like I know, you have an intent. You said to yourself, ah, oh, I need that I need that card because Susie's going to come to the water cooler. Susie's going to come to my desk and they're going to keep bothering me. That Just that card could be the thing that frees and changes your world. But more importantly, having this skill set has the potential to impact every area of your life for the better. So you have some intent right now. And before the law of diminishing intent takes effect, make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you guys today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. 